Hello everyone, welcome. We are in for what should be a very good night here for doing some astrophotography. As you can see behind me, um, we are just south of the Carl G. Jansky VLA or Very Large Array location. It is, a, it is the uh, National Radio Astronomy Observation uh, location funded by the National Science Foundation. And I'm excited to be out here tonight shooting in a Bortle 1, Bortle 2, um, depending on what app you're using to identify um, Bortle skies. But we are in, on a border of Bortle 1 and Bortle 2. Um, it is Milky Way season. The Milky Way will be to our south. It'll be rising um, just after midnight, I believe. Um, that is the uh, main reason why we're out here, hoping to shoot some awesome uh, objects within the Milky Way, um, but also take some wide field time lapses or and or um, uh, shots, stills of the Milky Way itself. We are set up just south of the location um, during after hours, after closing times of 4 p.m. Um, you're not allowed to do any astrophotography, any filming within, uh, they told me a two mile uh, radius of the location. I'm set up just um, down the road off a little bit, um, hopefully not um, within any areas of restriction and I'm able to stay here for the night and um, do my astrophotography. The skies are other than you can see from the west, there are some clouds rolling in. Um, those clouds are supposed to dissipate right around 11, 12 o'clock as well. Um, you might hear through the mic that it is pretty windy. The wind gusts are up to 15, 20 plus miles an hour. Um, but after 10, 11 o'clock, it should start to die down lower single digits, which will be prime for busting out my, my telescope to do some deep sky imaging. Um, like I said, we got to the west. Um, once I point my camera to the south, it's clear. There are no clouds. These clouds should roll over us. Um, by the time I'm getting set up, hopefully things will clear up to the north and to the east. Uh, very minimal clouds. Um, there's a lot going on. Like I said, it's Milky Way season. Um, a couple galaxies that I'm hoping to shoot. Um, shooting the Whirlpool galaxy shooting um, a couple nebulas looking towards the center of our Milky Way and seeing the um, center of the Milky Way and um, there's been solar activity. Um, hopefully uh, last night I did not get a chance to see the, so the maximum solar activity that has, hasn't been seen in 20 years. You were able to see um, the Aurora Borealis um, in parts of New Mexico, however I wasn't um, able to see them last night. So I'm hoping if we're lucky, we might get another solar storm that is um, in, on the larger um, magnitude scale. And hopefully we might be able to see them to our north while we're shooting um, or while we're just um, waiting for the Milky Way to come up. The VLA's two hour proximity from my location offers prime dark skies within reasonable driving distance. Whether you are driving through the day or at night, the VLA is a sight to behold for any space or telescope fanatics who want to marvel at one of the ways we are able to study the universe. While I was setting up, I realized that all of the, you might not be able to see, but from earlier shots, all of the um, radio antennas, radio telescopes, are facing east um, and looking looking up, um, looks like at a 45, 50 degree angle. Um, and I kind of did a little tracking um, on my Solar Walk um, app that tells you where um, planets, stars, deep sky objects are in the sky um, by pointing your camera or pointing your phone and uh, or just navigating manually. And I saw that Virgo is up, and they may potentially be looking at the Markarian's chain, uh, the Virgo supercluster of galaxies. Um, I'm not sure if I could get on their website and look at what you know the VLA is studying currently, um, but it is interesting that they are pointing in that relative direction. So it may be cool to see um, later on if I could do some research um, what they're looking at. Um, but my guess is this is. Since it's radio, they look at black holes, pulsars, quasars, 
Um, that's their area of focus being in the radio um, um, spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, that could be the area, one of those galaxies that they're looking at. So I'll check back in um, here soon once I get my mount mounted or get my rig fired up. All right, guys, we're all set up out here. Um, it's still twilight. Um, it's not f completely dark yet, as you can see. Uh, my telescope silhouetted against the horizon. Um, but moon is still up. Um, shouldn't be affecting us too much. We are imaging Whirlpool M51. And this was just a five minute sub. But um, in the next three minutes, I'll have my first image. Um, polar lining went re really well under a minute. I'm at 62 seconds. Um, Think that's pretty good i don't anything under a minute for me seems pretty reasonable um no um star trails really but yeah so we're started for the night all right we're uh getting the first couple images of m51 in um here they are got that's my uh this will be my third image coming in. This is my second right now. I'm just going to shoot um, as many as I can for five minutes um, up until probably the Milky Way comes out. Um, just so that I can capture as much data as I can on the Whirlpool um, and keep that going as an ongoing project. Weather, the wind has definitely died down as predicted. It's definitely in the single digits, which has helped with my guiding. Um, temperatures in the 50s um, and it's expected to drop into the to the higher to mid 30s tonight so got the sleeping bag ready to go um, but we're in it for the for the long haul it's just now um, on the boundary of twilight and, and complete nighttime um, but the moon is indeed still out um, but shooting away from it um yeah it's gonna have some impact but once it goes down um we'll definitely be able to see the full um portal class one and portal class one and two um sky and i'm looking forward to it all right Milky way is up it is coming on two o'clock this is a uh, 20 seconds it's not the easiest to see through the camera but we are running with DSLR, and we are also shooting with the telescope. Just going to continue on shooting towards the Milky Way and get as much data as I can before the sun comes up in the morning. This place is definitely well worth it. Um, if you ever get a chance to get out here, Again, weather just to visit to see it but you also get a chance to do some astrophotography this is the place to be it is incredible